Hello everybody, this is Dirtok Diktor Sadiq Muhammad Hassan. And here today we will record a short video about the nervous system, especially a cranial nervous system. But let us say a little bit about uh, generally in central ner uh, generally in nervous system. So nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is divided, is subdivided as well, um, what we call brain or an spinal cord. Brain includes the cerebrum, cerebellum, and brainstem. And the brainstem is divided into midbrain, mid, uh, midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. Brain or cerebrum is subdivided into regions or areas or lobes. Generally, it is divided into lobes, frontal lobe, uh, parietal lobe, and what we call, uh, let, let, let us see the parietal lobe. Uh, yes, here, we see here, this is the temporal lobe, this is the temporal lobe. And this is the frontal lobe, this temporal lobe, frontal lobe, occipital, and amparetal. Yes, amparetal. This is the parietal. So that is the cerebrum. What about the cerebellum? Here is the cerebellum. Cerebellum is this one, the cerebellum. And this is the left side. This is the left side. And right side, right, left cerebellum, right cerebellum. So, what we are uh, saying is that central nervous system is divided in all this. But what about the, well, we're saying the nervous system? So, what is nerve? Let us see the structure in here. So, if every nerve cell contains this axons here as we see here axon in here i mean axon this uh, myelinated sheath this long this is the axon and this is the central uh, what we call a nucleus or cell body so cell body or soma so cell body contains nucleus and axon helix this is the uh, where there is no diff, where there is no myelination or myelin sheet as in continuation of a cell body or nook, uh, cell body and at, at the corners of the cell body is there is a dendritis, dendritis so this is the cell body and this is what we call axon and at the end of axon is there is axonal terminals. So that we that is what we are saying. So nervous system, neurons are nervous systems uh, cells uh, that contact uh, electrical signals are passed information rapidly throughout the body. A typical neuron consists of cell body. Typical uh, neurons consist of cell body with many dendritis and one axon. Signal passes from the dendritis through the cell body and down to the axon to the axonal axon terminals. A myelin, sheath, a myelin sheath surrounds the axon, provides insulation that increases the contraction speed. Also, when the signal reaches the axon terminal, it passes through the dendritis. Uh, dendritis of the next neuron. Or to the target cell, so that is that is the neuron. So let us see another the types of the neurons, the types of neurons, and what is what we call in generally neuralgia. What is the neuralgia? It's a nervous tissue cells, neural tissue cells. Here is a, a capillary, as you see. Here is a astrocyte. Here is a, what we call um, oligodendritis. Oligodendrite are cells also, 
which which myelin uh, which cause myelination or myelate the nervous system as we see in, in this axon and this is a macron microglia and ependymal cells so what are these types of cells so nervous tissue cells called neuralgia as a general they support the neurons and four types of neuralgia Surround, uh, surround and protect the neurons in central nervous system. So what are these? Astrocytes, the most common one, this one, astrocyte, this one, which is impairing, which is contacting with the uh, capillary. Astrocytes, the most common type, surrounds the capillary in the brain and maintain the blood-brain barrier, which prevent the harmful substance and from, the, from passing from the blood stream into the brain and oligodendritis which are this one what do they do oligodendritis create myelin sheet that produce air or protect the central ner uh, central nervous system neurons and increase their contraction speed what about uh, this highly uh, structures down in here beneath the up of the brain ventricles uh, this is called ependymal cells which circulate cerebrospinal fluid they line also the brain ventricles and central canal of the spinal cord what are microglia this is small uh, starry like uh, structures what do they do so they called microglia they provide immune microglia, they support and provide immune support by using uh, phagocytosis to remove the pathogens that pass a uh, blood brain barrier or are introduced directly into the brain. So let us be back and see uh, central nervous system in general. So after this, let us see this video, short video. Sensory information are coordinated by the brain sending information throughout the body and peripheral nerves sending information to the brain. The nervous system includes the brain, spinal cord, and the nervous system includes the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. So let us be back and see. And, and now, as we said, central uh, nervous system. So let us, uh, let us now talk about uh, the cranial nerves directly. Let us go into the cranial nerves. So there are cranial nerves. Here are cranial nerves. Okay. Here we see. Uh, let, us, let me hide this one structure. And this structure. So this is the brain. Yes, again, this is the brain. This is the brain. And this is the, what we call, and uh, all this, uh, this is the spinal cord. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, this is the medulla oblongata. And this is the spinal cord. All this teeny yellow, uh, ray black, so, um, yeah, yes, these structures are a cranial nerves. So the cranial nerves are, let me highlight all cranial nerves. These are all the cranial nerves which I highlighted now, which all these highlighted structures are cranial nerves. So cranial nerves are two aliphatic nerve, nerves of a peripheral nervous system that don't interact, or intersect with the spinal cord, but rather con connect the certain muscles and organs of the head and body directly into the brain. So what do they do? They, as we said, the peripheral nervous system, as anatomically, they are divided into peripheral nervous system is a, 
spinal nerves, which are 12 pairs, and cranial nerves, which only function generally into hair and neck organs. And as well, also they are called cranial nerves. So there are 12 uh, pairs as well. So let us uh, let's hit this one. So again, this is the brain. So this is the brain. And all other structures which are yellow are cranial nerves. Let us do the next. Let us see the next what's happening. So now here we have uh, we have olfactory nerve. Let us say the cranial nerve is one, two, and three uh, transmit sensory organs from the spatial sense. From one. Spinal nerve, uh, cranial nerve, number sorry, cranial nerve, no, uh, nerve number one, number two, number three, transmit sensory signals from a special uh, sites. So number one is olfactory. So let us highlight olfactory nerve. That is now we have highlighted. This is uh, generally as uh, this is small structures are cranial nerves, as you see here, 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 here. These thin structures are, uh, are, uh, are olfactory nerves. Olfactory nerves, the small thin receptors pass uh, through the mucosa membrane of a small point in the nasal cavity. So they go inside and penetrate the uh, cripriform palate and they end up with this with this part which we call a pulp, olfactory pulp. So the olfactory pulp takes the signal um, again upward and send this, this as olfactory track and send this an uh, olfactory a lateral striate so and goes into a temporal lobe, a temporal lobe where the sense uh, where the sense organ where, where, where the, the, there is the, the destination of the olfaction, olfaction, the sense of smelling, the sense of, of smelling is interpreted, interpreted, uh, what we call olfaction, uh, so as olfaction or olfactory. So this goes into a structure what we call, um, where we call. Uh, they terminate olfactory sensory area of ancus of the temporal lobe. So before we leave in here, before we leave this, uh, let us mention only two, three, because this is a track, it's not a spinal nerve. It's, it's not, I mean, a cranial nerve. So let us, let us say uh, only three abnormalities. And, and a lesion is that occurring this at the urine. A lesion is that occurred during uh, surgeries or trauma or whatever the cause is and, and all the cores away the this, what we call olfactory nerve there may be a disorder or lesion what we call anosmia anosmia is a loss of sense of smelling so w w what is it can be bilateral or maybe and uh, it is unilateral so whatever it, the, the cause is aparosmia is a perverted a sense of smell is strong smells so the perfume is smell abnormal perfume is smell abnormal in here and the other one is olfactory hallucination this is very common especially as psychiatric cases or epilepsy and so nothing and yes so perception of smell usually unpleasant in the absence of stimuli that is what we call hallucination so and uh, number two, this is optic nerve. This is optic nerve. Let us see. This is the optic nerve. Yes, optic nerve. So optic nerve uh, is very, very complicated. We will see later. But let me draw a little bit about the olfaction and, and this structure. I'm not good with the drawings, and so on, so, yeah, but I will try my best. So let us say this is the eyeball this one eyeball and this one eyeball it is only yeah it's not uh it's not what we call oh yeah 
let, let me Yeah. Let us suppose this this is the cornea and this is the eyeball. This is forfa and this is the optic nerve. This is the fova. So it is very rough, very rough. I'm not good with <laughs> drawing, but in general, I mean uh, to draw the what we call uh, the, uh, the pathway, visual, visual pathway. So this, this is optic nerve. This is the optic nerve. This is optic nerve. This is the optic nerve. And this is the this is the right side example it's me or the patient sitting in front of me this is the right side red eye this is the left eye this is cornea as we see and this is the yeah so this is the optic chasm optic So, I mean only to understand the structure, that is what I mean. So, let us draw what we call Let us draw, this is the midbrain, for example. And this is the lateral chinoculate body. So this goes into the lateral chinoculate body. This goes also, this is the lateral chinoculate body also. So, and so nerve goes into supernerve. So here we have the lateral, which is temporal lobe. Here is the temporal lobe. Because there, this is the temporal lobe. Temporal lobe. And this is the nasal side. This is the tendra temporal side, and this is the nasal side. Nasal side. This is the nasal side. Let me, uh, let me. This is the nasal, and this is the temporal side. So the nerve is. So the. The fiber is coming from the nasal side, it goes and goes and goes the and they cross the optic chasm and go the other way. But and, and then the structures that come from the nasal side goes and goes and goes and cross. The both sides, let me draw the other one with a black color. So but structure is that uh, fiber is that coming from the Temporal side, they don't cross. They go and continue with the nerve as an optic nerve, as an optic nerve in here, and cross. They don't cross the optic chasm, so they go as an optic track, optic track in here. That is why we call optic nerve is not a nerve; it's a track. Okay, so and and the the other side. The right, uh, the temporal right side, the temporal uh, side or the uh, the temporal uh, fibers, uh, the fibers coming from the temporal of the right eye, they don't cross also, so they don't they continue as as a nerve. In the optic chasm, they don't cross. The only that the only fibers that cross is the nasal parts or the nasal fibers from both sides cross the opposite one. Cross to the opposite side, so they decosate. So they decosate, yes. So, and uh, ten percent of optic nerve goes into ten percent of the nerve fibers goes into what we call 
mid brain this is the mid brain mid mp is a mid brain and this is the lateral geniculate body lateral geniculate body this is the lateral geniculate body so they go uh, and 90 percent go into the lateral geniculate body okay after lateral geniculate body they go yeah they go and and they go into the what we call um, so the lateral geniculate body from the lateral geniculate body from the lateral geniculate body from the lateral geniculate body uh, fibers move upward and parietal into the parietal lobe and go into the occipital lobe yes upper fibers this is called upper fibers and lower fibers come again this is called lower fibers this which are dashed are lower fibers so again upper fibers go into the upper fibers and the lower fibers go into the lower this is also this dash it is a lower fibers so the from the lateral geniculate body here lateral geniculate body this is the lateral geniculate body absolutely this let me highlight uh, with another color for example yellow green this is the lateral geniculate body this is the lateral geniculate body and from the lateral geniculate body they go into upper fibers this upper fibers go into the uh, fiber uh, move upward up through the parietal lobe and they go into the uh, what we call occipital lobe and from the lateral geniculate period the lower fibers this is the lower fibers this lower fibers this highlighted or dash it dash dash with the with the dash dash it space and they come into uh, they move the lateral temporal and to the lower part of the temporal and to the occipital and what is this what is this where do they end up this dash dash it space is the occipital lobe what we, area which we call a calcarine fissure calcarine fissure of occipital lobe calcarine fissure of occipital so so this is the visual pathway and and as we see here it is a it is a, it is a simple diagram it's not uh, i'm not good with the drawings here <laughs> so it is a simple diagram so let us be packed with what we call olfactory nerve in here so number three let us say the cranial nerve number three is called uh, yeah let us see the this is number three this is number three which is highlighted now it's number three so it's called vestibular cochlear it is seven i mean i mean i, I don't mean three it is a seven seven vestibular cochlear is called also static acoustic so so they take special sense special sense so olfactory and optic and cranial number seven which is called vestibular cochlear all they carry the sense a uh, transmit sensory signals so let us do next let us take next one now what we see here is a cranial number three number four number six number nine and two alif transmit motor signals from the brain okay so let us everything that comes that comes from the brain is a motor it's a motor and everything every structure that leaf is and especially when we are saying nervous structure is that uh, coming from the uh, yeah this is the optic nerve you see this is the I mean olfactory it's an, uh, cranial number four, uh, number three olfactory so it comes and it moves uh, we will see it in a later details but let us see details now the cranial nerves are two alpha groups so let us uh, let us see let us see let us highlight yes
let us uh, let us uh, this is the highlight of the cranial nerve olfactory so we will see details in a bit in a bit okay so uh, olfactory nerve as we said olfactory and uh, cranial number four uh, trochlear six abducens and nine an accessory nerve and two alif hypoclusial this all take uh, the carry a motor fibers so so when you say a motor fibers they are from fibers are from the central nervous system or uh, yes from central nervous system the origin is always in the uh, in the brain stem so in they go out they emerge from this panel uh, what we call and brain stem into the structures in the target organism so sensory inputs or sensory nerves always come from outside as a receptor is uh, start as a receptor whether they carry a sense of smell a sense of of uh, what we call uh, a test or a pain or receptor uh, proper pain or temperature or whatever so they carry out a sensory signal into the brain stem and central nervous system so that is the oculomotor let us see this is cranial nerve tro trochlea now this highlighted now is a trochlea this one which is true so it moves only one nerve it moves only one nerve so only one a muscle is made and a person um trochlea we will see the we will see in a pit and uh, in a short we will discuss uh, the muscles that they move. Okay, so let us see the now up to center and so that long highlighted nerve. This long highlighted nerve is uh, what we call uh, up to center nerve. Let us see the accessory nerve, which is eleven. This is a long nerve. This long nerve is mufis trapezius muscle. And still a higher and uh, trapezius muscle, uh, the two muscles, two important muscles. So, and uh, stay sternocleidomastoid and trapezius, the strongest, the, 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 the two heaviest muscles. The, it's not heaviest, but uh, they are uh, very strong muscles. So, in the neck, so they this is the what we call accessory nerve. So, hypoclosal, what is he talking about? What is he saying? Hypoclosal, all these structures here, you see. And as the name implies, the hypo, hypoglucial, glucial means the tongue, so they is innervate the muscles of the tongue. Innervate the muscles of the tongue. But we will see in a pit if one of them, what is, uh, wh where it innervate is. So uh, again, we are still uh, with the cranial nerve. So cranial number five, cranial number seven, cranial number nine. Again, cranial number ten is uh, they transmit both sensory and motor. These are a mix numbers, mix nerves. So they are mixed. So let us see trigeminal, which which supplies the nerves. Yes, this one is very it's huge now one. So it supplies and a half of the face. And it supplies all the, um, uh, the sensation from the face, from the face. Yeah, it's not uh, don't confuse with facial nerves, which supplies uh, the muscles of facial expression. But they this carries the general pain and temperature and so on, something like this. Uh, and it's subdivided into temporal, and I mean uh, um, optic, which supplies all the. Uh, we will see later. We will see later, everyone. So this is the facial nerve, now it's coming. This is the facial nerve, it's also very large. Yeah, it's very complicated and important nerve. Very complicated and important nerve. Yes, let us see cranial number hypoclusal, a uh, glusopharyngeal. So as a gluso, again, it uh, supplies a tongue and pharynx. So the muscle is of, uh, muscle is of only one, one muscle of the uh, i mean muscles of the tongue and muscle muscles of the tongue is divided into ex external or uh, external muscles and internal muscles so so we will see which number supplies internal and external the cranial number figures or cranial number 10 is a very complicated also also it's complicated is this one this 
highlighted one now this one is a cranial nerve number 10 so it supplies internal structures heart lung and so on and also supplies uh, somewhere else so we will see why it is called why it is and uh, with the cranial nerves and goes internal structures all right we will see in a bit in a while so let us uh, let us say olfaction now olfaction or olfactory nerve again olfactory as we see as we have seen here uh, olfactory again so nasal cavity now now this is the nasal cavity because we are in a nasal uh, what we call uh, an what you call olfactory nerve, olfactory nerve, it's a sense of smelling. Now this is creepy palate, which I already uh, said it, it pierces, yes. It pierces the small physicalis, a small, I mean, uh, what we call nerve fibers pierce the creepy palate and they rely on or, or relapse I mean, they yeah here, so they uh, what we call the um, they come into the what we call olfactory pulp. So this is the olfactory pulp as we see previously. Now it is olfactory bulb. Yes, this one. So always every every structure which I touch is highlighted. Is highlighted. Yeah. Okay. Let's take again. So let us see how olfaction uh, function. Yeah, in this video. The process of olfaction or smell begins with hair-like cilia that line the nasal cavity. This lining is called the olfactory epithelium. As air enters the nasal cavity, some chemicals in the air bind to and activate nervous system receptors on the cilia. This stimulus sends a signal to the first order neurons connected to the epithelial cells. The signal is carried by these neurons from the nasal cavity through openings in the ethmoid bulb and then to the olfactory bulbs of the brain. The signals then move from the olfactory bulbs along the olfactory tracts to the olfactory area of the cerebral cortex. Yeah. We said that uh, the process of olfaction or smelling begins with the hair-like cilia structure, hair-like cilia that line is the uh, the nasal cavity these are the so let us move next one yes what we are see, what we see here is optic nerve so let us see optic nerve and now this is the the eye pole structure again the optic nerve will transmit impulses from the vision they pass from the retina of each eye from each eye and through the optic forming of the small pawn and meet the optic chiasm. Yes, this is the optic nerve. You see here, we highlighted this the eyeball, this the eyeball again, and this is the yeah. Let us move this one. Let us this remove this one also. Let us remove this structure also. So this is the optic nerve. Now we see the optic nerve. This is the optic nerve. And the eye pole or the eyes. So the eyes are eyes are spherical structures. Eyes are spherical structures. So let us see the optic nerve first. I mean optic nerve. Yes, the optic nerve is sending a send a signal from the eye pole from the eye to the brain from the eye to the brain it consists of mainly a fibrous of a fibrous driver from retinal ganglion cells they extend to posterior to the optic disc exit the eye pole and join to form optic nerve so as optic nerve which passes through the optic chiasm so the orbit portion of the optic nerve is 20 millimeter to 30 millimeters in the lens and uh, slightly select uh, flexible 
in order to accommodate movements of the eyeball. So optic nerve from each uh, eye merge to form optic chiasm. So let us see the eyeball. The eyeball is, is a complex structure, so it's very sense the organ of the nervous system are responsible for eye, for vision or sight. The eyes are contained with the orbits of the skull, uh, contained with orbits of the skull, uh, is where they are protected from the injury by parts of a fat. Almost the layers, outermost layers of the globe of the eye is a fibrous tunic that includes sclera, which is the white matter, uh, which is the weight of the eye, and the anterior cornea, the transparent parts of the eye, and the vascular pigment middle layer or OV. We call it ovia. Uh, comprises the uh, choroid, ciliary, uh, ciliary body, the iris. The anterior lining layer of the nerve is a tissue, the retina. It continues to the cranium as an optic nerve. The anterior chamber of the eye between the cornea and the iris is filled with a fluid liquid called aqueous humor. So this is the uh, in the in the eyeball there is a liquid which we call an uh, aqueous humor, and the posterior chamber between the iris and retina called with the viscous fluid, call it uh, viscous fluid called it vitreous humor. So the posterior to the iris is a crystalline crystalline lens focuses light from the uh, to form an image. On retina, and so the eyes move extrinsic and, and move his eye pole is moved uh, by extrinsic muscles. So let us see the optic chiasm now. Optic foramen. This is where that is the optic foramen. The nerve exit is that structure here, that in the middle of the yes. So the foramen, the, it is the opening of the opening. So the naming given the aperture and sometimes called it a canal. Yeah. So optic chasm, optic foramen and optic chasm. And this is the where the decussation occurs. There's so located the it is located the hyper base of the hypothalamus. An X shaped a chasm allows for partial decussation or crossing of the fibers of the optic. So the fibers, as I said, Briefly, the medial part of the tract uh, and posterior part of the chiasm, so no, uh, no connection with the optic nerve, so they simply cross the chiasm. They connect the medial geniculate body to the two sides, so the remaining of the chiasm consists of two sets of fibers. The numerous crossed fibers occupy the central portion, central part of the chiasm, passes from the optic nerve uh, of one side from the optic tract to the other decussation in the chiasm with the similar fibers of the opposite nerve. So the uncrossed fibers occupy the lateral part, which is uh, the, the temporal one. So let us take, let us see how the fusion works. So the process of fusion or of seeing begins with, uh, yes, in this, in the eye pole. So let us see this video. The process of seeing begins when light waves enter the front of the eye. Brightness and distinct colors are first interpreted by structures in the back of the eye, and then sent as stimulus signals that the brain interprets as vision. On the exterior of the eye is an area called the cornea that includes a pupil, a hole through which light enters the eye. Inside the eye, light is refracted by a lens and focused onto the retina, a layer of receptors that lines the inside of the eye. The retina includes two types of nervous system cells, cones that interpret color of light waves and bronze that interpret the intensity of light. These photoreceptors process information into nerve signals that travel through the optic nerve into the occipital lobe of the brain where signals are interpreted to represent an image. Okay, so let us uh, move next. Uh, we, we said Oculomotor nerve fibers. Oculomotor here is number three. Oculomotor nerve. It is usually, it is almost identical. Right here and left side are identical nerves because they emerge from the same side. But right here and left side. So oculomotor nerves transmit impulses over the eye. Uh, 
uh, of eye movement is they transmit impulses from the eye movement to say they pass from the midbrain through the superior orbital fissures of ethmo sphenoid sphenoid to innervate the most of them so this is the uh, oculomotor nerve is the one that moves almost to almost to four or uh, yes nerve fibers uh, nerve muscles uh, i mean and uh, external ocular muscles are six so four of them is a move is moved by what we call uh, yes what we call oculomotor so let us see so let us see what is it what is moving all right so that is the oculomotor yes and this is the midbrain because it goes into the midbrain this is the midbrain all this structure is a midbrain uh, the midbrain or mesenciflon one of the areas of the brain in a short constricted region connecting the pons to the dice of diencephalon involved is with efficient hearing motor center alertis motor control and alertis and temporal regulation this is the hypothalamus you see so so it is uh, mesenciflon is subdivided into three structures into four structures yes we will see in a layer okay so which uh, the mirror print consists of the tank thumb tank thumb uh, two large paired nuclei uh, corpora uh, quadricimina these are subdivided into superior pair and inferior colliculi which control the visual reflex and inferior pair uh, the inferior colliculi uh, sorry <laughs> control hearing reflexes hearing related reflexes so the mirror brain connected centrally ventrally and laterally to the brain stem as a cerebellum via superior cerebral pedicles and relay and relays information uh, from the midbrain or higher brain uh, to the forebrain the brain stem is partially formed by the midbrain matella blengata and pons so let us see the superior optic fissures where the this nerve exit is yes here this is the nerve exit is so as we see here this is a lateral, I mean, levated palpebrae uh, superiors, which is supplied by, innervated by nerve number three. Yes, olfactory. This is also called inferior rectus muscle. It is supplied by cranial nerve number three. This is num uh, which we are talking about now, olfactory. And I mean, uh, sorry, and uh, oculomotor. So here we see superior elevator palpebrae superioris and this is the uh, inferior oblique muscle it is supplied by oculomotor and this number uh, and this is inferior uh, rectus muscle is supplied by uh, supplied by what we call uh, number, uh, cranial nerve number three oclo oculomotor nerve so three muscles by one nerve so let us continue All these muscles, yes. As we see here, inferior oblique, one of the six extraocular muscles, facilitates rotation, eye rotation, is the thin narrow muscle near the lacrimal groove uh, that arises from the orbit and attaches into the lateral parts of the sclera. So, the origin is a maxilla orbit, insertion inferior cerebral, uh, yes, that is the muscle, so inferior becranial nerve, so it is true. So, so what, what what action is this nerve uh, doing and uh, this muscle is doing it is lateral rotation laterally rotate is the eye so let us move forward so we see every muscle that is moved by special nerve cranial nerve again all right so we came into the uh, trochlear nerve number six uh, seven i mean trochlear so it is as we see it is nerve that is responsible for hearing and and balance the equilibrium so it is again this highlight it, oh oh sorry sorry this is number six uh, five four four this is number four 
it supplies a superior oblique muscle sorry fam sorry this supplies the superior this muscle this muscle superior oblique muscle it only supplies only one nerve only one uh, ne muscle so that is that nerve so it this is the midbrain again and it exits as we see it the trochlear nerve goes into the midbrain and exits superior orbital fissure and supplies what we call a uh, muscle superior oblique muscle so let us move next Now we come into the trigeminal, which is very important and large and sensory uh, muscle. So uh, the trigeminal nerve is are, uh, the largest cranial nerve, as you see, the largest and consists of ophthalmic branch and maxillary branch and mandibular branches that pass sensory and motor signals between the bones, bones and structures of the face. So this is the trigeminal nerve is very large very large so this is as you see here all this this is uh, this is the what we call trigeminal so it is ophthalmic branch is this one ophthalmic branch is this one this is the ophthalmic branch because it goes into the orbits of the eye and supplies in all this area the face all this area it supplies all this area into the of thalmus. and maxillary supplies the maxillary area yes that's the maxillary branch and the mandibular branch, mandibular branch this will be the mandibular branch mandibular because it supplies the lower part yes of the mandibular this is the mandibular, mandibular boom and the supplies all the structures around here and sensation as a motor as well so uh, this is a maxilla a sigmoid sorry and this is the yes this is the maxilla so it supplies maxillary structures and this is the orbit orbit this is the orbit it's not orbit it's not a structure <laughs> it is this hollow so in this orbit this is a, a nerve that supplies uh, this branch of a trigeminal nerve that supplies structures all the above including the uh, frontal lobe Part of frontal lobe and temporal lobe, little bit is called it trigeminal part. It's a trigeminal uh, ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal. So let us see the next one. Now we have uh, reached the ophthalmic branch. Okay, ophthalmic branches of the trigeminal. Let us see what is doing, where it is coming uh, with structures. Yes, in here we clearly see this is the. Of, yeah, and it exits what we call a superior sagittal, superior orbital fissures. Yes, there superior orbital fissure. That is that where op optic nerve also exits superior orbital and semilunar ganglion. That is the semilunar ganglion. It is a ganglion which, which the uh, three parts of the nerve is come together and. Yeah, and, uh, and the fire branching as a sensory when the ganglion is uh, when they come uh, when they carry out sensory organs. But a ganglion is uh, as a definition is a, a group of cells of nervous system or uh, nervous system, uh, nervous system or a uh, nervous system. Yes, group of nervous system lying outside the ne central nervous system. Yes. So here we see maxillary branch again. It exits the maxillary branch. Where does it exit? The foramen rodentum. This is the foramen rodentum. This branch. Yes, here is the front rodentum. Yeah. And it also goes into semilunar ganglion as well. So let us continue. Next one. Now we reach the mandibular branch. Mandibular branch. This is the mandibular branch, the lower branch. As we see clearly here now, clearly, this is the mandibular branch as it goes into the mandibula. All this structure is a mandibular bone. So where does it exit? It exits foramen ovale. 
foramen ovale this is structure this foropit structures so there are a lot of structures that a lot of structures a lot of uh, nerves and plurfisilis uh, what we call a plurfisilis yes exit or enter uh, the pace of the brain pace of the brain with a small tiny uh, and different different size it uh, hollows so we will learn one time inshallah and uh, the structures in the what we call the brain so we come into the obtrusion nerve this is a number six this supplies the lateral rectus muscle only one muscle only one nerve so this is the lateral rectus muscle yes this is the eyeball this is the lateral rectus muscle so it rotates the lateral lead to the eye lateral yeah this it comes from the bones as as, as, as generally uh, the 12 cranial nerves they exit or they uh, the origin the origin and uh, they originate from what we call brainstem brainstem in generally so first two optic nerves they turn and generate they go directly they go directly into the and and and, and, and as we discuss it they uh, rely on what we call all the synapse or they terminate in the central nervous system the, uh, and not central nervous system i mean uh, the brain uh, cerebral cerebrum directly into the cerebrum or cerebral cortex yes but these are other structures they rely on firstly or originate if they are a motor and they rely on if, if they are uh, in, in the brain stem so the first two nerves uh, except one and two the first and uh, two three they rely on uh, come from what we call uh, the mirror brain for uh, two three four five six seven and uh, these structures they can uh, start from the opponents so number eight starts in the middle and the, the four other remaining uh, they, they, they originate in the mid bone and the uh, medulla oblongata so this is one of the structure is because it is number five and number six so it is coming from the pons this is the superior orbital fissure or fisheries we will discuss one time inshallah in a separate video so this is the superior fissure superior orbital fissure and supplies this muscle only this muscle yes that we see this muscle which is highlighted that is the oblique that's the lateral rectus muscle lateral rectus muscle all right so let us move what what is going on here what is going on here oh we see oh human face yes what what, what is what does this muscle is give you impression as in generally so when you see like this it is it is it's a facial hold the face now appears as one structure so this muscle is called a uh, facial expression muscle is a facial expression so facial nerve is transmit sensory and motor impulses to and from the face so they so they pass between the pons and test the receptors on the test uh, on the tongue through the internal acoustic meatus and stylomyostoid foramina so all these structure we will see the facial nerves the branches of facial nerves all yeah you see you see this one all this highlighted structures is the ner facial nerve so where do they come from bones as well bones very good bones they come from bones so where do they go they supply they take sensation a special sense a special test a special sense so which is test so that is the tongue and where do they exit internal acoustic meatus and uh, uh, the, 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 yes ac internal acoustic meatus yes that and stello mastoid foramina stello mastoid foramen this yes stello mastoid here so if you you see they supply also they supply so stello mastoid uh, yeah as a, as a, as a, i mean the the tongue the tongue, let us say, the tongue is made up of four extrinsic, intrinsic muscles. The superior lingual, which is called longitudinalis, ling, uh, linguis superioris, inferior linguinalis, 
longitudinalis lingui inferior the vertical longuinal verticalis lingui and transversus linguinalis lingui lingui means language where it's coming from language all languages related to the tongue so it is latin word this is uh, 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 what we call link it's a uh, link transversus transversus lingui that is what this structure is all this muscle is all under the control of a hypoglossal which is cranial number two aleph work together to give through and it is greed flexibility the sensory nerves of this tongue of the tongue include this multiplar division of trichimular which supply number three uh, this is a lingual branch and the facial nerve which is number seven and cordial tympani and the glossopharyngeal which is uh, 11 and lingual branch uh, gives which uh, which gives a lingual branch and the vagus which gives a superior lingual branch so the intrinsic muscles that form the a tongue work together with extrinsic muscles that originate from the structures and uh, or other than a tongue and inserted into the tongue so so let us move next one yes so let us see now next we are now in facial nerve so vestibular cochlear nerve vestibular cochlear nerve what is doing vestibular cochlear nerve vestibular cochlear vestibular cochlear nerve is transmitted impulses for hearing and equilibrium which is parlance little this parlance equilibrium so they pass from the ears to the uh, to the external acoustic meters to the pons and medulla oblongata as well so what which is this structure is and the internal acoustic meters you see this structure this opening yeah in the ethmoid bone yeah yeah and this uh, bone is called a temporal temporal lobe yeah temporal bone so they go into the pons and medulla oblongata which is here later yeah so let's move next one And now we glossopharyngeal, as we said, glossopharyngeal 